This video is brought to you by Insta360. I've always wanted to have a Mac Mini, yet I never found a reason to buy one, as I've always been more of a laptop kind of guy. Apple's new Mac Mini proposition, however, was an offer I could not refuse. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Knowing the kind of bargain this device is, naturally, I started seeking accessories that can complement it. Something that many other Mac Mini buyers will inevitably do. The list I came up with, which I'll put in the description, somehow led to my discovery of some quirky new apps, so I was like, why not mix both worlds into a format which has always piqued my viewers' interest. So, the first thing that came to my mind, believe it or not, was a 3D printed stand a fellow creator showcased somewhere on social media. Now, I'm not sure who was the original designer of this little contraption, but I'll do my best to link and credit it in the description. This is a super simple 3D printed flex stand that has a little corner cap that sticks out ready to press the controversial power button Apple came up with. So as soon as I press the entire Mac Mini on the top itself, it powers on. In this scenario, the entire Mac Mini becomes a giant button, as you can expect, which can be used to put the Mac Mini to sleep and of course, wake it up. This is definitely not the ideal implementation, but it has the foundation for something better. Because aside from serving as a button, it can also help the Mac Mini cool better. Equally simple, useful and free app I discovered complete at random is called Auto Raise. The purpose of this app is to raise a Mac window up front whenever you hover over it. No need to click a window tucked in the back to make it active. The app lives in the menu bar and it can be enabled or disabled by pressing on the little balloons icon. This is super handy if you like to drag and drop stuff as it not only saves you time to do so, but also keeps you away from unnecessary window tapping attention steps. I have increased the delay for this action on my side to around 250, which I think is the sweet spot. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? To match the cost-performance ratio of the Mac Mini, I couldn't think of a better monitor than the Asus ProArt 5K. This is a product that I intend to do a dedicated video on and of course compare it to the studio display as it is a direct competitor at half the price. At 27 inches, this is one of the few 5K Mac solutions out there making it ideal for anyone who works with visuals or just prefers that 218 pixels per inch native resolution. This monitor is factory calibrated and it offers all the picture profiles and coverage one might require, including a plethora of ports. One of my favorite features here is the front-facing USB hub, which is super convenient when plugging peripherals in a pinch or if the Mac Mini runs out of ports. Now, I know for a fact that some of you will rush into the comments to rant about the 60Hz refresh rate, but you have to understand. Unlike smartphones, where you have to touch to interact, 60Hz displays are more than enough for many of us, as long as they, you know, give us the right colors and picture quality. If I were to complain about something here, it would be about the, you know, front, bottom, chin, only because of aesthetic reasons. The stand, although very versatile, is not particularly impressive, but that can be easily fixed with a monitor arm. So. That thing paired with this ends up being a very decent package overall. This is a great value for money, by the way. To complement this monitor or any other non-Apple display, there's a must-have app called Monitor Control. This free tool allows me to control the brightness of any display, avoiding going through the on-screen controls, which is always cumbersome. In the case of this little setup here, the speakers, which I'll also get to, are connected via the monitor's built-in stereo jack on the back. So in addition to the brightness, with monitor control I can also adjust the volume. To step it up a notch, I've also taken advantage of Logitech's MX Creative Console, which comprises of 
two units. The main unit is a USB-C wired keypad which has nine separate customizable displays ready to serve any action. These actions can be app specific and can change according to the active app. And you can in fact have more than nine buttons thanks to the pagination buttons on the bottom. The second wireless unit serves as a volume rocker and of course brightness controller all thanks to monitor control. I'll put a link to my favorite Mac accessories episode at the end of this video if you want to learn more about the MX Creative Console. To me, the Mac Mini is almost perfect. And the only reason I'm saying it's almost perfect is because it's missing an SD card slot. And for that reason, people like me have to rely on different sorts of hubs just so I can have an SD card solution. Now, in my case, for this set, I'm going to be using this very powerful 8K Ugreen hub, which also has support for micro SD and SD. And I'm going to find a way to route this somewhere, probably underneath the desk and extend it so that it's not messy up top. But you can go for any size or one of those that come in size to fit exactly underneath the Mac Mini, which I'll link in the description below. Maybe I'll just order one of those. An absolute must though, is this USB-A to USB-C adapter because this way you'll be able to plug in any of your USB-A devices directly. The next product that I think is a perfect fit for the Mac Mini is the newly released Insta360 Link 2 and Link 2C. These AI Pack new model webcams step into the shoes of my beloved Link that I've shared many times throughout my videos. Both of these models feature Insta360's new 1.5 inch HDR sensor that can deliver stunning 4K video quality of up to 30 frames per second, which is miles better than any built in monitor or laptop webcam. Upon setting them up, I was seriously impressed by how great the picture looks, even in low light. The 1080p60 looks just as great being the most common used mode ever for streamers. It's more fluent in motion while being the sweet spot for good resolution. AI tracking is of course present where a single palm gesture triggers the gimbal version of the Link 2 to follow you around. But we now also have something called group tracking. It comes in handy when there is a group of people ensuring everyone stays present. Link 2C on the other hand can take advantage of auto framing which uses intelligent zoom controls to keep everyone centered in all scenarios. This being Insta360 however, I knew I could expect even more serious software punch and it wasn't wrong. Thanks to advanced ORI algorithms combined with AI noise cancellation, I can be sure I will sound my best regardless of the environment. There are special microphone modes as well, like voice focus, which is ideal for single person conferences. Voice suppression, on the other hand, is ideal for multi-purpose meetings, focusing on the active speaker while ignoring background chatter. When AI tracking is enabled, the traditional L zoom gesture for zooming in and out are present, as is the P sign that activates whiteboard mode. Previously, whiteboard mode would only work with recognition markers, but even if you don't have them, you can now take advantage of the smart whiteboard feature, which works flawlessly. What I was personally impressed by is something Insta360 calls pause track area. This feature sets boundaries where the Link 2 will stop tracking at a certain predefined location, only to resume when it comes back and re-enter the allowed zone. Just like before, controlling the Link 2 and 2C can be done via the smartphone and if you have the Mini 2 in one tripod, you can take advantage of portrait mode. Desk view works on both the Link 2 and 2C, allowing the webcam to showcase your sketches or concepts without any additional accessories. When not in use, the Link 2 automatically enters privacy mode after 10 seconds of inactivity or by simply tilting the lens down manually. The 2C model uses a manual built-in privacy switch and both of these webcams are compatible with all major video conferencing software including Microsoft Teams, Skype, Zoom and more. And don't get me started on the virtual backgrounds and the natural bokeh effect that replicates a DSLR-like depth of field for natural bulky. I suggest you explore it on your own by following the very first link in the description below where the first 10 people will get a free tripod with the code Insta360BF on Amazon. So let's say you're about to join an online meeting but you're not sure if your camera is set up right, if you look okay, if your background is messy. There is a little app that helps you do exactly that and it's called Hand Mirror. It lives in a mini bar and the sole purpose of this app is to give you an idea of how things look before you 
jump into that meeting. It's perfect and it also has a paid version which unlocks the option to check on your mic settings. Now, allow me to step into more of a professional great mic world and mention this Lewitt Ray mic which you've been listening to since the beginning of this video. Connected to Lewitt's Connect 2 interface which is sold separately, this mic is special for two reasons. Aside from bringing studio level quality, this XLR mic features something called autofocus for your voice. See, unlike pretty much most other mics, if I step away from this one, I will not disappear into the distance, but actually sound in focus thanks to something Lewitt calls Aura technology. What's even more impressive here is a feature called Mute by Distance. The way it works is like this. As soon as I set up a distance parameter, the mic will mute itself unless I step back into the allowed zone. Nobody can hear me now. This is incredible. It actually works in tandem with the autofocus Aura tech that I mentioned a second ago. Now pair that with the Insta360 Link 2 and I can have a very professional and most of all unhinged presence online, which is amazing. By the way, let me give you a little secret. So read my lips. The secret is this. While talking about online presence and meetings, two new Mac apps I installed on the Mini are the Menu Bar Calendar and Pasty. The Menu Bar Calendar is super simple yet plenty useful for people like me who never have an idea what day or date it is. Sitting quietly in the menu, I can simply refer to the current date should I decide to change the icon of its appearance, and of course click to expand it and enjoy a full month view. A more useful app for meetings might be Pasty, which is a Mac clipboard manager on steroids. I've been using the Mackie app for a long time now, but Pasty is something that I'm definitely switching to. The reason for that is because it gives me an actual visual representation of my clipboard history and a much more sophisticated way to find what I'm looking for. A groundbreaking feature in my opinion is the ability to filter what I've copied by apps. On top of that, there is a global search option as well as the ability to create different spaces for organization. Super clever. You might have noticed that I didn't go for something crazy when it comes to peripherals for the Mac Mini. Instead, I chose the classics. MX Master 3S for the mouse and MX Mechanical Mini for the keyboard. Both of these devices have established themselves as the gold standard when it comes to integration and versatility on the Mac. And when paired with the Creative Console I mentioned earlier, I end up having customization options beyond my wildest dreams. Perhaps my only complaint about those peripherals will be towards the permanent switches on the MX Mechanical Keyboard, which are a bit mushy for my taste and nowhere near as satisfying as something like the IQ Unix Magic 65, which is similarly priced as the Logitech option. Talking about switches, on this switch is a Mac app I wish I knew way earlier in my life. This is a clever toggle app that allows me to turn on and off all sorts of Mac settings on the fly. Just like most other apps I showed you, it lives in the menu bar and it combines functionalities of tools that otherwise might be installed as separate apps. For example, if I don't want my Mac to fall asleep, I can just flip a switch. If I want to toggle dark or light mode, the same. If I need to clear my desktop for a meeting or recording, you guessed it, flip a switch. This app is plenty customizable to the point where I can even set up a radio. I love it. You know, listening to online radio is kind of nostalgic. So for that reason, I've paired this little guy with the JBL's 104 BT compact reference monitors. These are not blockbuster speakers, but they can be considered very accurate when it comes to sound representation, plus, you know, they get quite loud. Packed with all sorts of connection options, they also feature Bluetooth, making them ideal for streaming both wired and wireless sound in any room. The reason I included them in this list and in the description below is because they're very reasonably priced and have a very decent holiday discount at the moment. After so many useful little apps, the Mac menu might get messy. And if you've seen my recent Mac apps and settings episode, you might know that I'm a fan of Bartender, but Bartender requires license. So a better a, and actually lighter free alternative is something called Ice. So if I kill Bartender, I can launch Ice. And as you can see, it pretty much does the same thing, but much quicker. 
which is perfect because this way you can organize your menu. Now you can go to ice settings and you can go in the layout and drag and drop all the icons that you prefer to stay up top at all times. Oops. Just like this and boom. And you could even have a hover section enabled. So as soon as your mouse hits the menu, you can see everything. Very nice. This leads me to Ina, an open source video player, which let's be honest, anyone needs because QuickTime is never enough. Taking notes from QuickTime, however, Ina features similarly clear interface, but with a much larger video format support, subtitle integration, equalizer, and a lot more. In terms of gaming on the Mac, I don't think you can go beyond the 8-bit Dell Ultimate controller because first of all, this thing is mappable and customizable via the app. Second of all, it works via Bluetooth or a dongle and it also has a charging station which works perfectly in this setup specifically. Now, if you somehow think your Mac Mini deserves more of a retro vibe and perhaps more of a quirky lineup of accessories, I suggest checking out my recent favorite Mac accessories episode where I showcase exactly those types of goodies. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter and as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is Z, or not.